Quasi here. And in this video, I want to talk to you about detachment and an advanced form of detachment that not everyone might be ready for. If you're watching this video, then that means you're really ready to understand how to detach from all of these worldly goals and not have them tug you by the string, but truly be a master of them so you determine and dictate what your destiny is rather than some external circumstances. This was something that took me a very, very long time to figure out and it was very, very dangerous for me to get to this path because I saw that with every single thing that I did, there's always this duality. You know, if you desire something, with desire follows fear. So this is what will teach you to always take a step back and be the puppeteer rather than the puppet that's being controlled. I want you to stick around to the very end of this video because what I'm going to share with you is one key and corresponding with it, one tool that you can start to use right now to help you become more and more unattached to what you truly want. Before you watch this video, by the way, go down to the comments. I'm going to pin another video on letting go. Make sure you watch that before and then supplement that with this and it'll make a lot more sense. So with that, let's get started. Today, I want to talk about advanced detachment. It will be more appropriate to say unattachment than detachment because detachment implies uh, a lack of you know, lifelessness, if you will. But unattachment is an actual choice that you make. But why I want to talk about this topic is because I've seen that as I've grown a business, you know, I've gone in all of these areas in my life. Once you achieve success, you kind of start to get attached to it. And anything, whenever it challenges this success, then this illusion starts breaking. But you've become so identified with this illusion that it starts breaking you. Okay, so I want to teach you how to get out of that frame of identifying with this illusion and starting to see things for what they are rather than what you think they are. Okay, now uh, why people go through this same cycle of ups and downs in their lives. And what we've seen is we have so many clients in the program who, you know, sort of join and they do well before they join. You know, they've done 20, 30, 40, 50 K months, even 80 K months in their business, but then they've all of a sudden gone bankrupt and have lost everything. Why does this cycle happen? Because what's really happened when they've gotten up to success is they've become unconsciously successful. Whenever you become unconsciously successful, you're always going to suffer your success. Okay. This is why people, when they win the lottery, right, they always lose the money because within internally, they haven't truly become worthy of keeping around the money. So it doesn't become their default neutral. So things come in, forces come into play to really balance that out and take that away from them. So just like that, these same cycles keep happening in your life, which inevitably returns you back to your neutral level, right? They all cancel out. The good things and the bad things cancel out. So your neutral level uh, always rests at whatever it is you're experiencing on an average from the whole. So what can really be said is that these same cycles happen because of ignorance. Okay. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by ignorance in a second. Ignorance is accepting that which is unreal as real. Okay. What do I mean by that? If you look at everything around you right now, it's transitory, right? Your success, your family, your friends, your relationships, you know, your possessions, they're all transitory. They're transient. They're always in a constant process of becoming something else and going through some change. Once you start to identify with something that's transient, then naturally you're going to suffer because you expect it to stay the same, but it never stays the same. So this is the problem. And I'm going to show you by the end of this video how to take a step back from that which is transient and identify with something that which is real. Okay. So when you accept unreal as real, then you suffer. So to give you an example, the state of fear that I used to have over like, oh, maybe my clients didn't get results or maybe they're not happy. And then what that would do is it would get me reactive. It would get me to go and check my email and my social media constantly and then just have this thing in the back of my mind which would keep haunting me and then the next day I would just feel exhausted because when you keep fearing and you keep becoming anxious it just it just kind of drives you nuts it just diminishes and exhausts your energy so I would just feel depleted every single day because of stress and because of anxiety but I didn't really see what was going on at the time because you know the the mind the identification to the mind and the thoughts was so strong that you just start to move with these thoughts. So I'm also going to show you by the end of this video how to get to a point where you no longer identify with these thoughts, but but the space in which the thoughts occur, right? 
So this is also the natural progression that leads to suffering. And suffering is this unconscious identification, okay? You are unconsciously identified with whatever it is that's around you, whether it's your success, whether it's your family, whether it's your social status, all of these things you're unconsciously identified to. And why I say unconsciously is because most of these things you haven't even chosen to identify with, right? You haven't really made the choice and have said, I choose to identify with this. So because of that, it's largely unconscious. Just like the identification with the body and the identification with the thought. Any single feeling that happens in your body, you'll see that it's like, oh, my body hurts. Instead of the body hurts, you'll say my body hurts, which implies this is mine, which implies this is me. And then with the thoughts as well, oh no, my mind is having terrible and anxious thoughts. Instead of just letting the thoughts be, you have to engage with them and try to control them and try to change them, right? So this is the root cause of suffering. Identification with something that is always changing, right? So now I want to show you a concept that I call context versus content. I think I learned this from David R. Hawkins, but it started to make sense for me lately. So let's get right to that. Here's a diagram which will symbolize what I mean by context versus content. If you look at this diagram, there's a space, right? This boundary, that which that has this boundary. In reality, this boundary doesn't exist, but just for the purposes of demonstrating this, I wanna show you a boundary. Th this is the space which contains all of this content. Every little dot you're seeing here, they could be like thoughts in your mind, right? And this is the general space. Let's say this is a thought that arises. This is a fear. This is a desire. All of these things arise from somewhere and they seem to dissipate and disappear. So all of this stuff is the content. And the space around it that contains the content is the context. Okay. I'm going to explain why this is important to understand. When you understand this distinction, the subject object relationship, gets clearer okay so if you look into your mind right now there are these thoughts that keep arising right but then these thoughts are happening to someone this is the someone the context is the someone who is this that's seeing these thoughts and observing these thoughts who is it that's conscious of these thoughts what happens is whenever you feel fear, anxiety, you feel any sort of negative feeling or thought or even desire and you just get completely lost in it, you're moving with the content of your thoughts. Okay, this is why you keep experiencing the same cycles happening in your life. You know, the same cycle of relationships, the same cycle of pain, the same cycle of losing money getting betrayed, attracting abusive relationships, whatever happens, these same cycles happen because of the identification with the content. So these content, the, all of this content keeps arising, keeps arising. One can say they come from the subconscious mind or they come from this, this and that, but it's really difficult to pinpoint where they come from. The more you keep staying concerned with the content, you're going to miss the whole point, okay? The problem is you move and you're identified with the content of your mind. And the more you feel this fear and you keep looking into this fear and you get identified with it, your actions become influenced by this content. Okay. So to give you an example, whenever I feel fear and I predict something bad happening to the business, I'll immediately check my email. My hand will just reach for the phone, you know, just like with Instagram stories. That's why I deleted Instagram. It's like you, you see something interesting that you want to like, get validation for and then you just reach for your phone you're like all right let's fucking story this but at a point it became so reflexive that there was no say there was no conscious say in do i really want to do this it just became an unconscious choice it just became a pattern and a habit so just like that when you identify with your thoughts in your mind that's what that's what happens right to the point in, in the grosser manifestation of it it influences your actions Okay, so there's really no point trying to control your mind and trying to control these thoughts. The key is to become unconcerned with these thoughts. How do you do that? By becoming context. Identification with that which that never changes. So really think about it this way. The thoughts, feelings that you have now, the observer of these thoughts and feelings today are the same as that observer 
that observed the thoughts and feelings you had five to 10 years ago. Maybe the thoughts and feelings were different, okay? Maybe the thoughts and feelings back then were different, but the observer to whom those thoughts and feelings occurred, that was always the same. So just like that, the thoughts and feelings that's occurring to me right now, the observer that watches these thoughts and feelings is the same as it is within me as it is within you, right? It's, the, it's that same observer, but just the content is different. So this is why it's so dangerous to get identified with all of the content because the content is always changing. The observer, the awareness behind it never changes, okay? So let me give you an example. If I can become conscious of my thoughts right now, I take a step back from my thoughts. So it happens like this. There is mind and that which observes the mind, which is consciousness. Now you see yourself observing the mind, right? So if you're just observing the mind and its contents, you're conscious, okay? If you take a step back from the thoughts you're having right now and you see them as thought, you're conscious. But once you can take a step back and actually see the subject to which these thoughts are occurring, to the consciousness that even observes these thoughts, now you tap into true context, which is awareness. Okay, this is that which that never changes. So even your consciousness, your state of consciousness becomes like thinking. It still becomes the object because your state of consciousness is still subject to change. Okay, please remember this. Your current state of consciousness is subject to change. Why? What's the proof of that? You can remember what you had for dinner last night. Therefore, you can say that you are conscious of it but you can't remember what you had for dinner two nights ago or two months ago, right? But that doesn't mean you weren't conscious. So our consciousness is tied with our memory. Memory is always being added, it's being changed, but you know, it, it's just a state of a waking state. So all of these states are subject to change, okay? Awareness is not. Awareness always was, always will be, always is. It's just complete isness. Okay? So true context is when you take a step back and you're complete awareness. Okay? You're, you're the watcher of consciousness and the thoughts. So now how do we get to that point where we no longer identify with our mind and its contents? It's very simple. This is a process called self-inquiry. Ramana Maharshi talks about it a lot. Nisargadatta Maharaj talks about it a lot. Recently, I've read a book called I Am That. Uh, check that out. I also made a video on it, so click up here to check that out. But essentially, the process of self-inquiry is when you start to question these illusions, okay? So ignorance is when you take these illusions as real because you don't question them. So really think about it this way. You're like, oh, you know, I've experienced stuff, therefore it's real. I've experienced, uh, you know, those trees, I've experienced this air, I've experienced, you know, this thing I'm touching here, all of these things I've experienced. But what have you, what is that tool of experience? It's your sensory experience. So your experience, what you call as experience right now is limited to sensory. This is beyond experience, right? Just because you can't experience oxygen, you can't experience, you know, whatever it is that's not seen right now, but then science will discover it doesn't mean it's not existent. So just like that, you get very, very identified to these illusions and you start to think that they're real. That is what ignorance is. You see it appearing with your sensory perceptions and you, f you think that this is real, but it's not. So it's just enough to look at what is, question it. And when you question it, it breaks down. You start to see that there is no answer. There is no cause and effect. Everything is just causing itself. Have you ever like looked at something and been like, okay, so if this causes this, I'm going to try to replicate this and see if it happens again, but it doesn't happen again because again, a million different things are causing one another. So all that can be truly said is I don't really know, you know, you don't really know anything. And the more you start to admit that you don't know, the more you actually start to 
go beyond all of these false illusions and start to know the real thing, right? So just like that, self-inquiry is a process to get rid of all of these false illusions that you never even questioned. You just accepted it because you've seen it. So always question it. So the biggest question you can ask in order to get in touch with context and awareness is all of those thoughts that occur right now in your mind. Ask to whom is this occurring? Who is thinking this? Who is the thinker behind these thoughts? Who is watching this? Simple question. To whom does this occur? That's it. Naturally, the answer is, it occurs to me. Who is this me? Who is this me and who am I? And you start to get deeper and deeper into it until there's no answer to it. But that moment of silence and emptiness and bliss is the snippet of awareness and you got in touch with it, but then you fall back. It's like going back and forth until you truly break all of these illusions and you're no longer identified with all of this false illusion. And this just becomes your reality. This little moment becomes all of it. So it's kind of like um, your everyday living should be like deep sleep, like your mind, the activity that occurs in your mind, it's always going to happen, but you should not be, it's kind of like digestion. You don't feel anything after it passes your mouth, right? When it gets to your stomach, you don't really feel it anymore. Just like that, your thoughts should be like that. When your thoughts are like that and you've achieved complete awareness in waking state, this is what uh, yogis call turiya, which is the state of awakeness in conscious living. Okay, I know this stuff is getting real woo-woo, but just watch this video again to really make sense of this. Because this is something that's just experience. If you don't experience it, you won't understand what I'm saying. So the key I want you to take away from this video is don't accept anything as you see it. Because what you're seeing is an illusion. The more you start to understand that this is an illusion, the more you're going to, you know, knock off all of this falsity. And when you strike everything as false, all that remains is the truth when you no longer because what's happening right now is you look at these these contents and this content becomes a world right this content actually becomes this <laughs> because you get so immersed and identified with it context is taking a step back from the content and getting a larger picture view of it right so when you do that and you start to understand this who and there's that moment of silence the moment of awareness That's when you start to see everything as it truly is, what kind of illusion it really is, right? And with that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's do a quick recap of what we talked about. I know this was very, very dense, but please just use the exercise, do it, and you'll understand what I'm talking about, right? Today, we talked about how to really take a step back and no longer be identified with the content of your mind and what's happening around you but the actual pure context. When you do that, you'll be able to influence anything. Seriously, when you just take a step back, you'll be able to influence and create whatever it is that's needed. When the desire to create no longer is, what's meant to happen and what is needed to happen will happen. Simple. So understand that you keep experiencing these same cycles because you get so identified with this illusion, the content, that the content influences you and your behaviors. Like having memory, having thoughts, having feelings is not the problem. The problem isn't, you know, having thought, feeling, emotion, whatever. The problem is when they influence your behavior, when you become reactive to them and they influence your behavior, you're not able to see them for what they are. They become very real. They become a real experience within you. And this is what ignorance is. Accepting this unreal as real just because you can see it and you can experience it doesn't mean it's real Uh, Just understand that that which is changing even an experience even an experience like Samadhi right when you sit in meditation and you get real high or you do drugs and you get real high That's still a transient state. That's still not real. Don't accept it. Don't accept anything Just reject every single thing until and always inquire And then you'll get closer and closer to the truth. 
And this is what suffering is when you unconsciously get identified with the illusion. Okay. And the concept we talked about in this video is context versus content. When we get too identified with the content, the content drives us. When we take a step back and identify with that, which that never changes, then the content doesn't even matter anymore. You not getting that promotion at your job, you not, you know, um, getting that revenue increase, it doesn't even matter anymore. And when it doesn't matter anymore, you can take a step back and see what it is that really needs to be done and just go ahead and do it. And we talked about the evolution of mind to awareness and how the mind is just pure content. When you're identified with the mind, you move with the thoughts. When you're identified with consciousness, you're the watcher of the thoughts, but you're still in the thinking sphere because consciousness itself is subject to change in order to understand what's beyond the mind. You can't really understand what's beyond the mind because you can't use the mind to understand what's beyond the mind. Okay. It's just a state of being. That's what awareness is. When you just take a step back beyond the mind, become context. How do we do that? Self inquiry. Just ask, continually ask questions to yourself, to your psyche. Who thinks this? Who am I? Where does this thought come from? Why does this happen? Was I even born? Is this real? Why do I think this is real? Just keep asking these questions and then you start to chip away at the shell, right? You start to chip away at this shell. And once the shell breaks, you start to truly see reality. Okay. With that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope this was helpful. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell there, as well as let me know in the comments uh, what kind of videos you'd like to see me make. You know, if this was really helpful, I'll be reading all of the comments. And uh, also, I want to quickly announce the free one to one consult with me for the Reality Mastery program is open. Just click on the link in the description below to sign up, fill up a short survey, and schedule a call with us. Uh, who we work with are typically uh, entrepreneurs who are looking to take their businesses to the next level. They're already established. They're you know, seeing that the biggest barrier right now, because they have all of the tactics and strategies, they know what to do. The biggest barrier is mindset, is internal, is their identity. Who they are is the problem. They're very, very grounded and identified in this 5K a month or 10K a month version of themselves. And that's why they can't scale up. Okay, if that sounds like you, just click on the link in the description below to sign up and let's see how we can teach you how to consciously embody a different version of yourself according to what is required of you at this stage in your life. Also, the free Facebook group is open for you to take advantage of. The link for that is also in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.